So we've been speaking about Bing at the moment. We've been looking at the backlinks report, um, good and bad links. That was over on Bing, so we'll need to do something similar, but twice for Google. Because remember, Google has webmaster tools in two websites, Search Console and Analytics. So this will also be part of your plan about once a month, checking these results. If I back up a little bit, um, right here, in Search Console. Well, we're going to log into Search Console in just a moment, and then we're going to look at the dashboard, and here it's Search Traffic Links to Your Site. So I'm going to open the, the web browser, and it's in the other notes, uh, notes number two. But, and I'll put them in my notes for today. Uh, you're going to go over to google.com slash webmasters. Webmasters. So you can go to google.com slash webmasters. So quick links. Bing is bing.com slash toolbox. Google Search Console is google.com slash webmasters. And then there's Google Analytics. We'll look at that one third. Analytics. That one's at google.com slash analytics. These are all in handout number two, but to remind us because you'll, you'll be visiting it, visiting it often, hopefully about once a month. Um, we're looking at Search Console at the moment, so take, take the time then to sign in. We created the accounts last time, so sign in. See the sign in button right there. Okay, so after you sign in, you'll get your website. Remember, we had to set up either the WW version or the non-WW version. You should set up both. And so here I've got a bunch of results because I deal with a lot of clients. Uh, but it should show the regular version and the version of WW. You will get two pieces of data here, actually, so it's even a little bit more work unfortunately. Uh, if, I, if I open any one of them... Okay, so I, I've opened one of them, the WW version. You will have to look at both of them, but I'll, I'll just open one. So you get a screen that's like this. A column of crawl errors, search analytics, and sitemaps a bunch of things on the side as well. Quick overview here. This one shows you a, a, a month of data at a time, the current last 30 days. And so under this column, there's no errors here structurally of the server and such. I have these green marks. There are 32 perhaps broken links. I can go look exactly at what those are. 
I can see that in this time period there were 4,000 clicks. Remember, Bing was a lot lower, and that was simply, I'm looking at the same client. And that's simply, again, because Google is a larger search engine. It has the 60% market share, whereas Bing has 20. And so more traffic is going to come from Google, and that's what it's reflected here. In this time period, 30 days, it's up and down, it's up and down, but if you start on the starting date and the ending point, you know, this gets smoothed out. You see it's a general stable with this particular client. Sitemap, it shows these are the links submitted and indexed. That's the same as Bing where it, uh, it crawled the site and found these pages, but how many actually were saved to the index, to the search results. If I wanted to see, okay, well, what are these broken links? I can go to crawl errors. And it'll show me desktop view, smartphone view, feature phone view. So obviously desktop is any computer or laptop. Smartphone is any one of these smartphones. What's a feature phone? They should actually call it a featureless phone because it's those little like flip phones that have no features, that don't have a touch screen and don't have a real web browser and all that. Those are feature phones. They should be featureless phones. And so uh, on the desktop here, it says that there were some amount of broken links that Google recognized, then decreased, and now it's increasing again. For this particular client, it's okay that it's showing something like this. Because the problem with this client is that there is a variety of promotions that occur once in a while, such as this Celebrate Christmas promotion. Obviously, it's no longer Christmas. The link has been taken down. It's a broken link. It'll be added again once Christmas comes. The link will no longer be broken. Comic-Con. There was a promotion for Comic-Con. Comic-Con is no longer on, so the link has been deactivated. Google thinks it's a broken link. The point of what you would do with this screen is it would help you to find out, hopefully, what are your broken links. It'll, it'll tell you. Now, this one's surprising. That one shouldn't be a broken link. So I just saw something, something that I have to fix. So I would need to go back into the website and see, why is that link broken? It's not supposed to be broken. Once I fix it on the website, then I come back here to Google and select it and say, Mark is fixed. Yes, it is to some degree on the honor system. I fixed it. Yes, at the moment you could select all of them right now and fix it. But Google's going to check once in a while and it's going to say, this link is still broken. So don't just say it's fixed because it's not really fixed. You have to do something about it. You have to go to your site and make sure that file or page exists or you have to program it um, so that the link is no longer broken. I'll say here regarding broken links. Make sure the URL that the search engine expects exists on your site. It's telling us down there telling us here, this is the link that we expect. Why is that link missing? That's a broken link. So it might be simply that something got renamed and it broke. Well, for something like this where it's deactivated on a regular basis, that's not a big, that's not a big problem. For something else that maybe the page used to be called about our amazing company and we then rename it. Let's just call it about. Well, Google is still maybe searching for the one that was called about our amazing company. And in that case, use 301 redirects, redirects to fix moved or renamed links. Depending on uh, your software, for example, WordPress, you would use a plugin that what it does is it makes a little bit of code, it programs it so that when someone tries to visit a link and it's broken, it'll automatically send them to the correct link. Um, I can't really show that as a lecture item because it depends on people's sites, but you can look into it on your own site. How do I set up a 301 redirect? 
that is that it's going to redirect traffic from the broken link to the proper link. You, you set that up on your site. On your site. So this one right here, about press releases. I think that's one we need to get to. I think that was simply just re re uh, renamed over to press, about slash press and it's still looking for press releases. So we need to go in and set that 301 redirect so that when Google looks for press releases, it automatically is redirected to press. And I would need to check it, you would need to check it also on the smartphone. Notice we've kind of did a little bit more effort on the smartphone version at the moment than the desktop. There's only so much time and money in the budget and such monthly. So we spent time over on the smartphone one to get that one making sure it's as most correct as possible because more and more people are visiting on a mobile device on a smartphone than on the desktop so we want the smartphone experience to be the most fixed the most accurate hmm? your responsive side is it going to see the difference or does it have to the server technology okay. if you have a responsive site it should see the difference if it's set up properly it should it should do it, yes. Bootstrap. With Bootstrap, yes, or anything like that, yes. And then feature phone again. That, that's those little flip phones. We haven't gotten there to fixing these errors because if we look at the other parts of, that's, of the traffic here, there's very little traffic from this route. Back up to the dashboard. So that's one thing to look at. That's one thing that Google Search Console gives us over on Bing. We can see that I, I closed my window, but on Bing we can see that somewhere also in the in the dashboard. Search Analytics. If I look at that here, then uh, within the last 28 days, what this is showing is uh, there's clicks and impressions, right? Conversions, impressions. Hundred and sixteen thousand impressions. Wow, that's a lot more traffic than Bing. But this particular website then has appeared uh, one hundred sixteen thousand times based on these keywords, and in clicks in the last thirty days, um, four thousand clicks. Yes. Under the the heading impression, like if you put in Mexican restaurants and ten thousand of them come up and people don't even get, don't even see yours on the page. Are you still counted as an impression, even though maybe it came up in that batch? That's what you're talking about, by impressions, right? Yeah, when people search with a keyword and then this site appears. From here, it doesn't show it very easily about, is, am I on page 1 or on page 12? Well, that's what I mean. Is if it shows up on page 12 and they don't actually see your site at all, it still counts as an impression. No, but it can track that. It can track that someone clicked next, 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 and then saw you on page 3. So it is impressions. No matter where you are, it's going to count it. If you're on page 100, yes, that's still going to count because if someone went to that, that far... If they went that far, that's what I'm saying. It, an impression means they have to actually have seen it yes. on, the, on the screen. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all I need to know. And then so here it's giving me uh, some results that this keyword, this query, was the most clicked uh, keyword. So again, for free, this is some more, again, keyword research. For free, it's telling me this keyword is very valuable. I'm getting 739 clicks from the last month on this. So I want to use that keyword on, on Twitter and blog posts, etc. The second most popular keyword that people search for is the name of the company. Remember on day one of the class, we, we did a search for yourself, your name, then we did a search for your company, then we did a search for a keyword of your company. This is showing here that even the name of the company might not be the number one hit, and oftentimes it isn't. People are searching for concepts of your business. Right here, they heard about, I keep hearing about this Texcoco restaurant. Someone said Texcoco restaurant or something, and they search Texcoco restaurant. That's the third most... Uh, clicked result of people's search, and then the, the kind of food that it is, and the ingredient, and this and that. This blog post that we wrote relatively recently, it's already cracking the top 10 of blog posts and, and uh, keywords. 
It goes on, on and on all the way down here. Question. Last week, we, we did the site map things, and, and I successfully copied and put that in, and it all went. But now it's saying that it wants me to verify with my ownership. Isn't that something that I did last week, or did I not? Sounds do like it. Yes, if you didn't do it, um, click on that button and try to follow those instructions because yes, if we did it together last time, we verified. Yeah, and if it's still not saying it's verified, you can try one more time and then we'll look during the break. This screen then further can tell me the traffic of individual pages. This will tell me if I switch over to pages, the number one result is a slash. It's the root. It's the main level of the website, the home page, basically. That's what the slash means. So the home page gets the most traffic, or got the most traffic in the last 30 days, 28 days. The second most was the blog post about Weed La Coche. The third was the menu, then the contact page, then about in Spanish, then that blog post about Maguey, and so forth. This event, the Healthy Kids Choice blog post was number 10. So this, there's a blog post about the beverages, a blog post about the kids menu, a blog, you know, content. There's again that one about this new this food, Moronga, that is that we just wrote like in the last month or so. It's getting to be in the top ten of results. And you can go look at countries, so US, Mexico, Colombia most trafficked sites, devices, again, mobile devices. That's double the traffic of desktop traffic. So that's why we're focusing more on having a really good mobile experience. Tablets, maybe the heyday of tablets have, have passed. Tablets uh, seem to be on the rise, but from what I've been reading in technology circles and financial websites and such, it seems perhaps tablets aren't going to catch on as people thought that they were, and they're not increasing in popularity perhaps evident by this one tiny sample here uh, of, of a one website, I'm saying. But this is, seems to be the consensus throughout the web that you're going to get most of your traffic nowadays most likely from a mobile device. So if your site is not mobile friendly, that's a big detriment. Second, you're probably going to get most of your traffic with some desktop, which counts laptops. And then it seems tablets will have a place, but not as much as the other devices. Search from the web, you can filter that out, and your, your range. You know, I can say, uh, show me this based on a comparison also of the previous 28 days. So the longer you have this set up, the better. So last month, 3,900 hits. This month, 4,300 hits. In that little bit of time period, that seems good. That seems that perhaps the efforts that we've been doing are working. That's how you can tell all of if if this is if it, if it's worth it to you if your efforts are yielding. Yes, of course, the best indicator is how are my sales doing? Am I getting more sales? That's the best indicator, the best conversion metric. But because it's very difficult for them, because someone could buy, at the very least, if you're getting more traffic to your site, that's an indicator you're succeeding. Back on the dashboard, very briefly, sitemap, not much to say there, but that's important for you to set up so that the search engine understands all the pages of your site. Oftentimes I do see this warning, and a, and a warning is not as bad as an error, so if you have an error you want to fix that as soon as possible, but a warning is not as bad. And I can click to go in deeper and it'll say, well, these are the things that we found on this particular site, products, etc., etc. Categories, galleries, just not a lot really to look at on that screen, but it's important to set up for the search engines, the site map. Well, the whole point of logging into the Webmaster Tools was to look at our inbound links. Before we go there, any questions on these views that I went to? Okay. Um, 
my handout says that uh, in the dashboard search traffic links to your site. So notice we have search traffic on the left. We're in the dashboard search traffic links to your site. They don't call it inbound links. They don't call it backlinks. They're links to your site. It's just another term. Here, Google reports there's 2,200 links. Quick overview shows that Yellow Pages links a lot to this site. Eater.com, LA Weekly, Treat, Pinterest. So it is showing here a social network result. Another column shows similar kinds of data, showing that what's linked most often, according to Google, is the home page, then the catering page, then that blog post, the McGay plant, then we look what you then the menu. For each of these, and then higher data is the anchor text. Most often the word website is the active link, or oftentimes visit website, or at least explore. But I can go in more. Who links the most? I can go to more. And so here it's showing yellow pages, eater, etc. And I can download this. CSV format is fine. That's spreadsheet basically. And here's a different backlinks report. This one from Google. I could keep each one separate. Keep each one separate and then uh, do my analysis separately. Or I can put it all in one document. Pinterest, yellow book, PRL log, dot RU. What's dot RU? That's Russia. Unfortunately, a lot of spam traffic comes from Russia, from Eastern European countries, basically countries outside of what you would really be getting traffic from. I'm not sure where dot IS is. You can look that up, but most likely it's not a relevant link to your site. B2B Yellow Pages. Well, that sounds a bit spammy to me, simply because I know that yellowpages.com is the official one. It's very easy to uh, make a website, so someone could have made a website called B2B Yellow Pages, and it could have been a spam site. Google um, Search Console for whatever reason, doesn't quite uh, show you the exact link. It just shows you the domain in general. When we get over to Google Analytics, that will show you the exact link. So the main thing about Google Search Console is sort of like to check the, the health of your site. Broken links, that's what we mostly use it for. The actual checking of backlinks, it's going to be better in Google Analytics. So we'll do that in a moment, but any questions so far on Google Search Console? Okay. So, the third place to look at, Google Analytics. Let's go over to google.com slash analytics. A-N-A-L-Y-T-I-C-S. This is the one that everyone wants to know about. This is the powerful one. This is the one that we could spend a lot of time looking at because it's so in-depth and powerful. So let's switch over to google.com slash analytics. On the top right corner, click sign in, and you want to sign into regular Google Analytics.
All right, so again on mine it's already set up and it um, has a variety of these little folders which are known as accounts and in a particular account there are then properties. So notice here there's a particular client main website looks like it's finally broken 10,000 hits per month for the first time. This, uh, this view right here is very um, basic view. We'll see the detailed view, but then there's sessions, which is a variation of, of, of clicks, of hits, average session duration. This is one minute, five seconds, bounce rate 75%, goal conversions. These numbers right here, just all by themselves, may or may not be very meaningful. You'll get better meaning out of them once you actually click on your result. And notice again we have a, a date range at the top right. The longer you have it set up for, the more it can track data to get better results. So I'm going to go into the main site. This takes you over from the home view to the reporting view, there's the customization view and admin view. So I'm under reporting. On the left side there are various menus, various views, for example real-time. I can see what's happening at this moment. There's one person visiting the site. But by default, it takes you to audience view. And most of these views here have overview and then details. So we're probably right now in the audience overview. This is a month of data. There was a bit of a spike on August 4th, and then the low point seems to be July 18th. I can look at it by a day at a time or hourly. So right there specifically on August at uh, 8 p.m. or weekly, monthly. Anyway, I'll leave it on date. And then you've got all of these bits of data here. This is raw data, but without understanding what it is, you don't really know if it's good or bad what you have here. And you notice you can hover over the name of the different boxes and it'll tell you that a session is the total... Uh, a session is the period of time a user is actively engaged with your website. So that means that they're on your website, they're clicking on stuff, they're reading something and scrolling, they're engaged. That's a session. So they don't, they don't exactly name it, you know, like a click or a page view, it's a session that they're active. Users is that these are the people visiting your site, 8,000 users, which counts new and returning users. Page views, which is often pretty high compared to the other two, a page view is the total number of pages viewed, and repeated views of a single page are counted. So if a person goes to your home page and clicks refresh five times, Yes, it counted it like five page views, five hits. So here it's 16.8 thousand pages per session. How many times, how many pages are looked at or interacted with as the person is on the site? This is 1.6. I want to say that these three, pages per session, average session duration, and bounce rate, all three of them relate. And I cannot tell you what a good number is or what a bad number is depending on your site. So let me show, let me show you both sides of the coin. Um, this particular one says that there's about one and a half pages that a person looks at when they visit the site. This is a restaurant site and if you visit a restaurant, what are you most often looking for in a restaurant? The food, maybe a menu, maybe a phone number to call, you know, some sort of action for you to accomplish. The phone number of this restaurant is right on the home page. The order now is one click away. 
So a person goes to the site and they can get done what they need to do in less than two clicks, less than two pages. So perhaps for this restaurant, that's fine. Let's say on the other, on the other side of the coin, I'm a blogger and I've write, written a lot of articles, a lot of great articles for people to read. But I'm seeing here that all, the people are really only looking at one and a half pages. That means people are not sticking around and looking at my other articles. So for the blogger client, that's a terrible number. And for the restaurant client, that might not be terrible. They see what they need to see and then they're done. Same thing with average session duration. If I'm a blogger, I want people to stay and read as much as my content as possible. One minute spending on my site barely reads one article, maybe the main homepage article, but probably means they're not really sticking around to read much of my content. Again, that would be terrible for a blogger. For a restaurant, it might not be bad at all because also people could bookmark directly to always go to the checkout page. Maybe they constantly buy the same thing, they go directly to that page, they click checkout and they buy, and they do it pretty quick. So maybe for this client, that amount of time is not so bad. They do what they need to do, and they're done. Bounce rate is that someone visits a page, any page, not just the home page. And from that page, then they just leave. They don't do anything else on the site. Again, if, you can, if the user can accomplish what they need to do on that page, and then they leave, that's fine. If you want them to read multiple blog posts, that could be a terrible number. They only look at one page, then they bounce. They leave. What else is there to look at? So then they leave. In new sessions, this counts people, this tracks people, how many have returned and how many um, are new. And I can't tell you if this is good or bad, depending on your business. Uh, are you going to be able to run your business on new people all the time or repeat customers? It, it depends. Maybe you want new people to keep you know, bringing in new customers. And then it's shown visually here, so about 80-20 within this time period of one month. I can have it set up to go you know, more time, and maybe based on more time I get a better, get a better picture. Google Analytics is so detailed. Look at all of this data that it can keep track of. And obviously not to scare you, but whenever you visit websites, your web browser is giving away so much information that most of us don't even know about. For example, at the very least, our web browser is telling the website, this is our language. This is the language that this computer is set up with, or this web browser. For us, it's English, U.S. English. So the number one language of people visiting this site is English, 76%. And then it drops out to various versions of Spanish. Uh, general Latin American Spanish, Spanish, I don't know where that one is from, Spanish from the U.S., just Spanish, Russian, again, Russian sites most of the time are not really legit, unfortunately. Spanish from Spain, Spanish from... I think Great Britain, maybe, Spanish from Mexico, etc. I can go into countries. Most of the traffic comes from the U.S., and then Mexico, then Russia, then the U.K. Some traffic from Iraq, Spain, cities. This particular client has a location in Tijuana, in San Diego, and uh, Los Angeles. And the Los Angeles branch has existed for, I think, just about two years now, whereas the San Diego branch is reaching about 10 years. And so the Los Angeles branch is getting starting to surpass, has surpassed. I remember uh, some time, you know, six months ago that it surpassed it, but now more traffic comes to this website from LA, and San Diego. The point of all of this data, not that it's like some creepy stalker data, but the purpose of this data is for you to make decisions, to program your site, if you know how to do this or if your platform has this ability, you can program your site that it detects someone is visiting from Los Angeles. Let's make a pop-up appear that says, hello, Los Angeles visitor. For the next one hour, here's a 50% off coupon. Use it now. And then it can detect people from Mexico City. Hola, Mexico City, and who sent us coupon, etc. So uh, that's something that you're going to need to program to the site. Obviously, we can't get into it in this class. But that's the point of knowing this 
this data. Let me give you an example over here based on uh, operating system. Uh, or what was it? Browser. Uh, a few years ago, there was a big uh, hubbub that this website was found that uh, when someone visited, it was like some sort of booking, you know, hotel booking website or travel website or something. And it was discovered that people that were visiting uh, with a Safari web browser, their prices were actually a little bit higher than if you were visiting in Google Chrome or Internet Explorer or Firefox. Now, who often uses the Safari browser? Mac people, people on a Mac. Mm -hmm. So that company decided if someone's rich enough to own a Mac, they're rich enough to pay a little bit more <laughs> for our prices. And they got caught and said, whoops, uh, we, our programmer messed up, we'll fix it. Yeah, yeah right. So <clears throat> this is showing here that the number two, which would be close, is Safari. Third is Safari in app, which often means when you're in, like, let's say, Facebook and you visit a page in Facebook, it opens up a mini Safari in Facebook. It's the in-app version. So that's about 3,800 for Safari users, 4,800 for Chrome, and Internet Explorer, Firefox, Android. Relatively small amount of Android users visiting that client but we can program the site to detect Android users and do something about it, give an incentive, say, hey, don't forget to read our blog, and then maybe get traffic that way. Edge, which is the successor, the offspring, the next generation of Internet Explorer, is coming up. It's 7 now. That's usually from Windows 10. So Windows, you know, Windows 8 and below is Internet Explorer, Windows 10 and up is Edge. So this one at one point was zero, no traffic from Edge. Now that one's rising. It's getting closer to Android. YA browser, I'm not exactly sure that one. I think it's the Yahoo search browser. Amazon Silk, so if people have one of these Amazon Kindle devices, there's some people there. And Opera, one of the alternative web browsers. Number one is Chrome. So you go to operating system, number one traffic, even though the number one web browser is Chrome, the number one traffic from a device is iOS, iPhones. Very close by Android, then Windows, then Mac, Linux. Five people visited on their BlackBerry. So again, I can make a pop-up appear. Hello, BlackBerry user, we're sorry, here's a coupon. Service provider. Look at all this data that uh, that Google Analytics is collecting because our web browsers and computers give away so much of it. Some of these that say not set, however, this is that someone has gone in, for example, into private mode. Whatever your web browser is, and you go into incognito mode, it's supposed to shield some of that information that it doesn't get collected. You have to check on your web browser how to go into this. This calls it incognito mode. Some call it in in private browsing, some call it secure browsing, and that's why some of these say not set because they're hiding their data. Notice the number one in the screen is not set, the provider. After that we've got Time Warner Cable. Time Warner Cable is often home internet, then AT&T Mobility, so cell phones, Sprint cell phone, Cox, T-Mobile cell phone. So a lot of our traffic is coming from cell phones. Again, this is an optimized site for a cell phone. If your site is not optimized for mobile, it could be very detrimental. And so on and on, service provider, screen resolution. Here's one to look at, screen resolution. This is showing the dimensions of people's screens, not in inches, but in pixels or dots. And the thing is that if you look at these, any of these dimensions that are below 720, are not HD. Anything below 720 is not an HD screen. Number one result is not HD. Number two is not. Number three is not. Number four is barely HD. Number five is HD. So the top three views, the top three types of devices that people are using to visit the site on mobile are not HD. That simply means that when people ask what dimension of pictures should I put on my website and how should I put the size of my buttons and all of that? 
I can't quite answer that. In the past, when we had less choices of monitors, when everyone had a 14-inch monitor, it was easy to design a website. You design it with these dimensions. And now that there's 14 and 19-inch monitors, and then you know people on their TVs, and then we've got these devices with HD quality in our pocket, and then brand new 4K screens, there's no easy answer to say how big or detailed should your site be until you see the stats of your website. So I'm not even worried too much about HD screens yet because it's fourth and fifth place. 32% plus 20% plus 14% of the traffic is on a relatively medium to low end screen. That's all just in the audience. Audience basically is who is visiting your site. Acquisition is how did you get that traffic? How did you acquire that traffic? We can see percentages and we can see actual values, but here we have organic, direct social and referral. Let's see, Google Analytics. Acquisition sources. There's a couple of other ones that exist that perhaps are not showing up in this view. We've got organic traffic from search engines, non paid organic traffic. In this particular case, 50% of the traffic to this client is coming from non-paid search. Us, or that client doing all the things that I'm talking about in this class, the free stuff, the keyword analysis, the competitor analysis, the blogging, the social media, all of that free stuff. The second result in this case is direct, which is uh, traffic directly to a page. Uh, a person doesn't go through a search engine to get to the page. They type directly the name of the page, any page on the site. That's about 27.5% traffic. Uh, people either can spell the people can either spell the address easily and go to it, or they've got it bookmarked. You know, I can make a bookmark right on my home page on the home screen of my phone. So I can always go back to the Order Now page, and I just tap it, and it goes directly to that page. Direct traffic. Social. It breaks it down into social media. If you're tweeting, if you're Facebooking, if you're Pinteresting, if you're pinning, if you're doing all that stuff on social media, that's some traffic coming, coming to, the, to you. And it's here about 15%, which is about 1,500 hits last month. Referral, which is basically backlinks. That's their term for it. So backlinks are, uh, are, are accounting for 721 hits last month. 7.5% traffic from someone else's website. And we're getting to it, but we will be able to see what Google sees as the traffic from another site in a moment. It doesn't show up in this particular client, but there is also then paid search, which is obviously PPC, uh, you know, paying for clicks and such. It's not showing up here because we have not been doing that for this client in this time period, so there's no piece of the pie. But here then you would see, if you are engaged in PPC, you'll be able to see, okay, I'm paying this much, I, I spent $30, and it's only registering about 10% of my traffic in this month. I still wouldn't say, okay, I'm wasting my money. I would keep doing it for a couple more months, you know, three months perhaps. In three months, if still most of my traffic is not coming from that paid result, okay, maybe I'm wasting my, my money. Maybe I need to increase my budget. But you won't know that until you check your data. And lastly, there's email. Traffic on email lists. So if you've got an email list, a newsletter, and people subscribe subscribe to it, and there's links there back to your home page, Google can track that too. 
we haven't been engaged in email marketing for this client in this time period, so nothing shows up. Google Analytics allows you to set conversions. We'll look at this in a moment. But here we've created a conversion called Book a Table in San Diego. And in this time period, we're seeing that there have been completions. Looking at it in this view, conversions, the highest amount of success has been coming from an organic search. 0.73%. The worst results have been from social. People don't seem to want to book a table coming from a tweet or Facebook, whatever. People seem to, they search, you know, um, authentic Mexican food or whatever, and then they see this client and then they click book a table. That seems to be higher, although <clears throat> referral is also very close. So all those great blog posts, even though there's very few traffic coming from, rel relatively, coming from other people's websites, that's resulting in a lot of table bookings. Because again, works cited, good backlinks. That other website is writing an article about how great the food is and the top 10 flan and so forth. So that sounds interesting. Let's go book a table for the family. 0.69% success rate. Second highest success rate. This is not automatic. These conversions, you have to create them. Not sure that, but any questions on this screen yet? Remind me in just a moment to look at how to create a conversion. Let me finish my thought on this screen. Because from this screen, then we can go look at uh, all traffic referrals. So my handout says. Acquisition, where did the traffic come from? Look at all traffic, specifically referrals, which are backlinks. And in this time period, I'm seeing Facebook was the number one backlink. And then a spam site, siteauditor.online. Right away, I marked it as a spam because, again, questionable address. Site auditor? Are they trying to sell me a tool to audit my site? Are they going to audit my site for good SEO? All of that is always spam. Anyone that's offering you out of the blue cold call for any sort of SEO stuff is often spam. So that's that seems to be a new one. I don't remember seeing it last month. So that'll be something that we need to disavow. Ignore site au site auditor online in the disavow tool. So Facebook are the two top hits. Then Yelp. I've mentioned Yelp and other review sites previously and that they might be valuable for a company. Third place, third real result, not counting that spammer, is Yelp. SandyWeeater.com is a blog all about food and restaurants and reviews and all of that. Traffic from that. Facebook again. I forget what the LM is about, but it's Facebook. A couple of Los Angeles-based food or a couple of Los Angeles-based blogs, LA Weekly and Los Angeles Magazine, traffic. You tell me, is this a good site or not? Yes. Monetizationking.net. No, bad. bad. That's one to disavow. 55 hits. There's Yelp again, and then this is probably page one, page two, etc. I'm going to say to show me 100 results. Or LA Times, Facebook Eater, LA Times, Discover Los Angeles Travel Channel, Big Famous Travel Channel. These are all, again, non-paid links. We didn't go to Travel Channel and pay to have a link back to the restaurant. Travel Channel link to the restaurant because it's a good restaurant. If you see Tico.com, is that spam or not? Spam. Nope, trick question. T.co is not spam because it's Twitter's link shortening system. So Tico.com is not spam. It's Twitter's short link system.
There's another one that looks like goo.gl, not spam. It's Google's short link system. So links are coming from Tico. Is DuckDuckGo.com spam? Another two trick question because you should, uh, if you don't know if it's spam or not, you should click on it and it'll tell you what page it's coming from. In this particular page, it's coming from the home page of DuckDuckGo. I don't know what it is. I'll click the link and it'll open up. Oh, it's a search engine. And uh, earlier I did have that other example of that other search engine which was spam. This one's not spam. This is an alternative search engine, not as big as Google or Bing, of course, but it's pretty popular. Uh, the main idea about this particular, what is it about, take a tour. This is like a, a smarter search, less clutter, and real privacy. So we saw that Google is keeping track of all of this data. One of, the things, one of the things about DuckDuckGo is that it will not store this data. It's more of a privacy-focused search engine, so that it doesn't leave all of this trail of what you do online. Bing and Google do keep a track of these things you do online for, you know, one half, you have to be cynical for, like, marketing purposes, and the other half for convenience. But DuckDuckGo is a search engine that's supposed to be about searching in a cleaner, more secure, private way. I might not have known that. I might want to go disavow it. I won't disavow until I do the research. This is similar to what we saw on Google Search Console, but if you click on a particular link, it'll then show you exactly where is it coming from. I clicked on the uh, LA Weekly link and in this time period, notice a little bit of traffic and then it's jumped. Well, this is concretely to show you this is something that we did. We looked, we looked up uh, a link from LA Weekly and then we promoted it. We went over on Facebook and Twitter and we linked to those links. We shared those links. That's causing more traffic. There it is concretely. For that client, we did what I said in this class. Take these positive links that you find out there and promote them. Share them on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever. Get more traffic to what's giving you traffic to get you more traffic. It's a, it's a feedback loop. Summer Dining LA Weekly Curated Map. <coughs> 99 Essential Restaurants. 10 Great Plans. There that one is again. Jonathan Gold Review. Jonathan Gold, Pulitzer Prize winning food critic. Jonathan Gold reviews the Olive Garden. Oh, that's funny. And uh, he has mentioned that this particular client very nicely. Oh, it's got the ad, yeah. So on this one, it's, the, it's related to the ad. So this is where you would see your backlinks in uh, Google Analytics. It's under acquisition. If you look at behavior, this is, okay, what is the person doing on your site? Audience is who is your who is the people coming to your site? Who are the people coming to your site? Acquisition. What are the people? I mean, where are you getting the people from? And behavior. What are the people doing on your site? So 
So in this time period, there were this number of page views, 40,000. Unique page views, 33,000. Average time, about two minutes. Bounce rate, 67. Exit percent, um, which is um, indicates how often users exit from the page when they view the page. So the main link that people go to is the home page, then the menu, then context, etc. Yeah. What was that, that one's new because they've always had bounce rate, which is the percentage of single page visits, and then exit. Exit is number of exits divided by number of page views for the page. It indicates how often users exit from the page or set when they view the page. It's a different measurement for, for bounce rate, apparently, taking the number of exits divided by the number of page views, whereas a bounce rate is simply that they visit a page and then they leave from a page. So for whatever reason that I myself am not fully understanding yet, exit value is another way to measure based on page views. And then to get really fancy, I can look at the behavior flow, which shows graphically people visit the home page, and then from here, people visit the home page, and then from here go to the menu, and then leave. Or they might be on the home page, some are not leave, some go over to this other page here, and on the menu, and then from here they go back to the home page, or they go to the menu. Just an interesting visual way to see people go directly to the menu and then oftentimes leave from there because they got what they needed. They go to contact and then they often go over, okay, let's book a table, go back to the home page. So just an interesting way to visualize traffic on your site. You might not have conversions because after our break I will then show how to create conversion goals. But I've got a conversion goal set up here. So within the, this time period of three months, 179 goal completions. No value assigned, but 179 completions, which is book a table in San Diego. 0.75% conversion rate, which is very common to have very small results here. Again, it's much more difficult for people to, depending on the client, to actually do an action. It's very easy to like and to reply and to comment, but then suddenly the mouse gets very difficult to use to click buy. And so that's what we're seeing here. 70, a quarter, three quarters of one percent of people have successfully booked a table. That could be for a variety of factors. Now abandonment rate is related to that in that they're starting to do something and then they stop, they abandon because maybe it's difficult. But in this case, people do follow through, very small amount of people, but within this time period, it's 175 completions, 175 times that people booked the table. We'll see how to create a conversion goal in right after the break, but this is something that's very useful to set up in Google Analytics, and as many of these goals as you want can be created. Uh, so that you can determine efficacy of your actions. And so there's a lot that we could look at on Google Analytics. It's so much data and complex that this can be customized into unique views under customization. So you keep coming directly back to the screens you need to look at under customization. Um, it's 8.18, we're going to take a break. When we come back at 8.28, what we'll do is I'll talk about setting up conversion goals, and then we'll talk about content creation. So we'll be back at 8.29.